In this video, we're going to talk about Ionic Native 3.x and the ability to now mock plugins uh, that we use uh, in our applications. Uh, so as you may already be aware, Ionic Native allows us to use Cordova plugins and it basically serves the role of wrapping those plugins and providing us a more kind of angular way to interact with those uh, through things like observables um, and it supplies types for us rather than using the sort of traditional Cordova way to include things where things are kind of available as these global objects uh, most of the time. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about the, I guess, the benefits of Ionic Native in this video. I'll link to another one for that if you're a little bit unsure about what it's all about. Uh, but recently there was an update to Ionic Native uh, which kind of changed the structure of it a little bit but also uh, gives us kind of two major benefits and that's that we now only need to include plugins in our application that we're actually using as part of Ionic Native. And we can also now mock plugins. And now if you've followed my uh, testing series of tutorials and you're probably familiar with the concept of a mock, but basically it's just a, a fake thing. Uh, so if we have a, like the camera class for example, if we create a camera mock, it's just a, you know, a class that we've created that pretends to be the camera. So if we wanted to actually use the camera, of course we need access to the we need access to the camera that's you know natively on the device. It's a, a physical piece of hardware that takes a photo and returns a picture. And now so that makes it hard to test through the browser because we can't access that. Uh, but we could mock it and we could make our own little fake camera that just returns us uh, a string uh, or a photo or whatever we want to return we can just code up a simple little function that will just kind of ignore everything else and just return us a simple little value. And so I'm going to walk through an example of that, uh, how exactly to do that in this video. And I'm going to just follow along with this example that's here for the camera plugin. So as you'll see here, now we you know, import the camera as we have in the past, although the, um, the path for it is slightly different. Uh, but what is different now is that we add plugins uh, from Ionic Native to the providers array. And now since we're adding them uh, as providers, that's what gives us the ability to then you know, mock those, to fake them. And the other difference here is that we also now need to uh, inject those into our constructor. So if I just um, scroll down here, I think there's an example. Uh, so here we have an example of mocking uh, the camera and so there's this class called camera mock and this is just like replacing the functionality of the normal get picture function so rather than get picture triggering I guess the activation of the camera and then the user taking a photo and returning that photo all get picture will do now is just return this uh, promise which resolves with some fake data and then to use that mock class all you have to do is use this use class uh, property here to supply your mock. So when you're adding the plugin to the providers array, rather than using um, the plugin itself, you're using your mock. And so I think this, uh, the wording here is actually quite easy to follow when you think about it, because you're saying I want to provide camera, uh, but instead of using the camera, I want to use this class instead. So it's going to provide camera throughout your project, but it's going to use this. So let's go through uh, working through this example in an application of our own. So if I want to set up the camera, I'm just going to copy that into uh, first to the app.module file, app.module.ts and we're going to set up that uh, provider in the um, providers array down here and then we'll just jump into our home page and we'll import that as well here and we'll set up or we'll inject it set that up as uh, just camera and then I'm just going to add an ion view did load function and we're going to call the get picture uh, function on the camera so we'll do this dot camera dot get picture and then that was going to return a promise so we do then and we'll have the result whatever that is and we'll just log it out And if we were actually using this plugin uh, for real, uh, we'd also need to run the command to install the camera plugin for Cordova as well. But we're not actually going to be running this on a device. I just want to 
uh, go through how to mock something. So we'll serve this now and we'll see we'll see what happens. I already was serving it, I don't know why I just cancelled that. Okay, so we're running into a problem here because it can't find the camera. And now previously with Ionic Native, uh, we wouldn't have to worry about this, so it would all be there by default, which is kind of handy because we don't have to worry about installing anything. Uh, but with the new Ionic Native, we're only including the plugins that we're actually using. So uh, we will need to install that, uh, that camera plugin from Ionic Native as well as the actual uh, Cordova plugin itself. So if we come in here, you can see this is how you install the uh, the core the core functionality of Ionic Native. Uh, but we can also just use that uh, same thing to install the camera. Of course, we just place uh, replace core there with uh, camera. So I'll run that now, so we can get that installed. And reserve that. Okay, so we run into this new error now that says Cordova not available, and that's because we're trying to access this native functionality that's it needs to run on a device to work. And we're triggering this as soon as uh, the page loads. We're trying to call the get picture function on the camera. Uh, we're trying to run it through the browser. We don't have uh, the application built with Cordova. We don't have access to that camera API. Uh, so we're getting this error. And so that makes it a bit awkward to test because uh, we could, of course, just, I guess, ignore this functionality um, until we were ready to test on a device. Uh, but it is nice to be able to test through the browser. That's one of the great things about using Ionic is that we can quickly test through the browser uh, before moving to testing on, uh, on a real device. And that's where that, uh, this mocking functionality comes in really handy because we can just fake our um, plugins whilst we're developing. And then when we're ready to test on a real device, we can go back to using the real plugins. So we'll just, uh, we'll mock the camera. So we're providing the camera here, uh, but we're gonna provide a mock for it. So we'll just use the one that was in, uh, was in the documentation here. So this is the mock class, uh, which extends the camera. So I think we, we don't even really need to worry about extending the camera, I don't believe. We can just make a simple class here with just one function. And all this does is and it provides a get picture function just like the normal plugin does. And all it does is just return this, this string here. And we could put some like real base 64 data in there so we get a real image back that we could use in our application as well. Rather uh, rather than just having this sort of fake data here, we could have something that we're actually, uh, actually able to use in the application. So when we triggered, a, um, triggered the camera in the browser, uh, it would still return us a photo. And that's going to obviously just be some static test photo, uh, but it's more useful than just, I guess, not doing anything. So now that we have this fake class, this mock that we've set up, we just need to say, well, we want to use that instead of the normal um, camera class there from Ionic Native. So all we need to do is say use class, and then we just supply the name of whatever the class was that we created. So we'll save that, and we'll see if it works now. Oops, did we forget a comma? Yes. Put that back in there. Okay, so you can see we're getting that result there. Base64 encoded data goes here. Uh, because we have this mock that's returning a promise that resolves with Base64 encoded data goes here. And then in here, we're calling that get picture function, uh, which is now using this instead of the actual or trying to access the native plugin and then we just log that result out and so we can we can create as many of these mocks as we want uh, for any plugin uh, and we can even add additional functions to these mocks as well so if we had something like the geolocation plugin uh, off the top of my head I think there's the, the get current position function uh, there's a watch position uh, so you could just create you know, mock functions for each of those uh, functions you're trying to access, or none of those, or one of those, uh, depends, you know, what you're actually using uh, in your application. And then you could have that return some kind of useful data that you can use to, I guess, test and work within the browser, or you could just use it so that, um, uh, so that the application doesn't complain whilst it's running in the browser. If you, you know, now that we've got this mock set up with the camera, whenever we try to access the get picture function on the camera, 
it's not going to complain and throw an error saying, well, Cordova, uh, Cordova's not available, you know, what are you trying to do? Uh, it'll just, could just, you know, fail silently kind of thing, do nothing, or it can, you know, return some useful data. Okay, so I just wanted to create a, a quick video on this to let's highlight this new functionality that's available now. I think it's a really cool addition and it's going to help a lot with uh, uh, developing faster and testing in the browser, uh, which I am a big fan of. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.